Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. I realize I just said that in the wrong order. Obviously, I don't know uh, my times of the day very well. Let's try that again. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. How's it going? Uh, thanks a lot for coming along today to another live OET mock exam speaking session with myself, Scott, with Swish English and OET Official. So can I just confirm, as I always do every session, uh, that everyone can hear me and that everyone can see me as well? Please just type into the chat box if you're watching on us, our Facebook page at Swish English, our YouTube page, or if you're watching with OET Official on Facebook and YouTube as well. Just type in and confirm that you can hear me and that you can see me. If you can hear me, please type in yes. If you can't hear me, please type in yes. But if you have typed in, then I will know that you actually can do so <laughs> as well. So a good few people are coming along saying hello. I'm going to assume that everyone can do so. It usually is the case, but I just have to make sure that everything is well. Great, okay. So um, how's it going, everyone? Let me know how your day is so far. Uh, what's the best thing that's happened in your day so far? Uh, what have you really enjoyed? Maybe your day's only starting, a bit like mine. Maybe your day is uh, nearly over and you're looking forward to a lovely uh, weekend as such. But uh, great, people can hear me and people can see me as well. Good, so um, anyone who's new to this session, uh, my name's Scott, OET teacher and academic director at Swish English. As you see behind us, who are we? We're at an OET and IELTS um, Preparation Academy, um, seven years experience, and we're looking forward to helping more students pass their exams. That's what we try to do and try to do it very well. And that's why we're having uh, this session today. So let's see who's joined us today. We have Sanju has said good afternoon and then hi and then Scott. Three different messages. Thank you, Sanju. Lots of effort. <laughs> we have Amina has said yes. Very good. And that means hello to you too, Amina. John has said or Jean said I can hear and see you, which is great. Alexi has said hello and has come and joined us today as well. Fantastic. Hello to all of you guys. Who do we have over on the other feeds? We have Surya, we have Siddharth, we have Akila, we have Nimisha, we have Athar, we have Nisha, we have Shaima, we have Maram, we have Kenneth, we have Shai, Mihaila, Bini, Juliet, Raja, Nimisha. I said that already, sorry. We have Charlie, we have Kathleen, Manjusha, Eltham, Flores, Talheed, Yogesh, Glory, uh, and Surya. Okay, a few more. Keep saying hello, guys. Nice to see everyone today. On the YouTube feed, let's see who we have. We have Jasmine, we have Pari, we have Arya, we have Ikra, we have Annie, Patience, Glow, Juliana, Sonia, Mahai, Kanishka, we have uh, Jacqueline, we have Mira, Ami, Margaret, Bijamo, Chick Chick, great name, and Ansi as well, as well as a few others. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming along today. I really, really, really appreciate it. So let me know, guys, in the chat box uh, where you're from. And also, when you're taking the OET exam, guys, where are you from? And uh, when do you plan to do uh, your OET exam? Please let me know. Hazel has joined us as well. Hazel has said, good morning. I'm going to assume it's nice and early with you, Hazel. Binny has joined us saying hi. Uh, we have Alexi saying greetings from Dubai. Great answer. And then Shibi has said good afternoon as well. Densi has said hi. Tintu has said hi as well. Fantastic. So guys, let me know where you are from and when do you plan to take your OET exam as well. Shibi has said, I am from Kerala in India. Densi is also from Kerala as well. Keep the comments coming in, guys. Where are you from and when do you plan to take your OET exam as well? Okay. We have Shamai from Iraq. I can't share all the comments, unfortunately, but I'll try and announce them as best as I can. We have Namisha from India, currently working in the UAE. Anjum is from Pakistan. Um, we have Abhishek from Mumbai. Jibi from Kerala. We have Kenneth from uh, Myanmar taking the exam in August. Mahela is from Romania, is based in the UK. My exam is next Saturday. Wish you the best of luck with your exam, Mahela. Uh, thanks a lot for confirming that with me. Hensi from Kerala. Sruthesh from Kerala as well. Shalini from Kerala. I've been to Kerala. It's a beautiful part of the world. So I maybe have been to your hometown when I was there a few years ago. Quite, quite, quite a lot of Kerala students here today. Islam from Sudan. Gloria from Ghana. Planning and taking the exam in September. Janaka is living in New Zealand. Uma is from Bangladesh. One more. Jothi is also from Kerala. Oh, actually, one more. Andre is living in Ireland. Go the Irish. And I have my exam on August 28th. 
Okay, good. A few from the YouTube feed that see who, who is confirmed about where they're from and when they're taking the exam as well. And we have Danny from India. Ikra taking the exam June 26th, so next week. Best of luck with that, my friend. Jacqueline from the UAE as well. Asha is taking the exam July 24th. Josmin is from India, taking the exam July 10th. Anusha is also from India. A couple more. Nisha from India, taking the exam June 26th next week. Best of luck to you, my friend, with your exam. Hope your preparation has gone well. Mira uh, from Kerala, exams on June 26th. And then Juliana from Zimbabwe, planning to write the exam in October. Fantastic, guys. Thank you very, very much. A few more have come and joined us here on the Facebook, uh, our Swoosh English page. Till now, Sandy said, I didn't take my date, but planning to take it in August. Great. No need to rush the exam, uh, Sandy. No need to rush it whatsoever. Wada says, good morning from Libya and welcome to you too. Amira says, good morning. I am originally from Egypt, living in the UK. Saramia said, I am from Kerala. Binny is from Kerala too. And Nithu has joined us saying hi, as has Regina saying hi as well. Fantastic, guys. Thanks a lot for confirming that information. So welcome to everyone. Um, good number of people from all over the world today taking their exam at different dates. And no doubt you're here for some mock exam speaking practice today, whether you're participating or just listening in to some great advice today and taking away something to help you with your own speaking exam preparation as it goes along. Well, without further ado, let's get started with our class today. So the format is roughly similar to anyone who has taken the exam, who has been to these classes before. Try to keep it the same because it works and we're here to get some speaking practice. We're going to learn and review the scoring criteria for OET speaking. Anyone who's new to OET prep today, well, you're gonna get some ideas about what you're assessed on on your OET speaking and how you can best um, get the highest marks in each scoring criteria for the OET exam. Those who have been to the classes before, well, a bit of consolidation has hurt no one. You're going to take part or listen to OET role plays. We'll get two role plays to done, uh, to done, sorry, two role plays done today. And you guys can listen in or practice. Um, you can listen back to feedback on student performance. And of course, I encourage everyone to give their own as well. As the interlocutor, I can't pick everything up. I'm trying to listen and take part in the exam while writing down feedback at the same time. It's a lot for one person to do. Uh, so that's why I encourage everyone else to pick up on some comments too, and I will uh, suggest uh, my own feedback on those comments. And then at the very end, if we have some time, we'll do a brief Q&A, and I'll tell you about how you can pass your exam first time for even cheaper with Swish English. So stay to the very end to hear that information. So guys, I want to know, why are you taking the OET exam? I want to know this from everyone who's taking the exam. What's your big reason? What's your goal? What's your aspiration? What is it about the OET exam that when you pass it will make you a better person, will make you a happier person, will make you a more accomplished person? So let me know exactly, guys, what is it about the OET exam that you hope to pass and you hope to improve and you hope to achieve? Throw your comments into the chat box, guys. I'll gladly read a few of them out. What is it? Why are you taking the OED exam? Why are you putting yourself through all of this effort and all of this, um, this study? What do you want to improve from it at the very end? So throw in your comments, guys. We'll gladly answer a few of them. It's a good way for me to get to know you, your aspirations, your dreams, the things that you want to achieve and the things that you want to improve on as well. Okay. Anyway, while a few more, while I'm waiting for a few comments to come through, we have Nolene has said, hi, I am Nolene from Zimbabwe. Welcome to the session today, Nolene. Marie has said, hello, I'm Marie. Welcome, Marie. Hope you're enjoying the session so far. Regina is taking her exam on June the 26th. That's amazing. Uh, and wish you the best of luck with your preparation. Sneha has said, hi. And Marie has said, I am from Chennai as well. Okay, good. Anyone, guys, want to answer the question? If not, okay, good. Here come the comments now. Uma from UK and wants to work as a GP. Very good. Uma wants to work as a GP. Mira would like to work in the UK and be part of the UK health system. And Ikra wants to register as a doctor in Ireland. Sanjita to fulfill my dreams in developed nations. All great reasons. And Noliana said, I am taking the OED so I may relocate. So, of course, you want to move to some other part in the world. Fantastic, guys. Good. So uh, next question I have for everyone is keep the comments coming in, guys. I'll definitely read them as I come along. But when it comes to your OET preparation, especially your speaking exam, 
what's your number one challenge? What's the big thing that you find difficult with your OET speaking? Let me know, guys. Is it your fluency? Is it your grammar? Is it your vocabulary? Is it your tone? Is it your pitch? Is it your intonation? Is it um, your expressing empathy? Is your ability to organize the role play into coherent thoughts? Is it uh, creating dialogue? Throw me your comments in, guys. What about your OET uh, speaking exam do you find a little bit challenging? Amira said, I want to pursue and continue my career as a registered pharmacist in the UK. And we would welcome to have you over here, Amira. Looking forward to seeing you. Saramia said, I would like to work in the UK as well. And Nolene has extended upon that. I am starting from scratch, so I am willing to learn. Well, I'm very happy, Nolene, that you're here today because you have to start somewhere. And it's important that you start from the right point and know where you have to be and what you have to do. So thank you for coming along today and take all my advice on board. I'm very, very happy to hear that. Alexia said, I want to return to the medical profession and move to the UK as well. So a good number of you are looking to move to the UK and work as doctors and nurses in the NHS. Big reasons uh, for doing so. Anyway, let's have a look at some comments that we have here. Uma said, my vocabulary and grammar is difficult. Siddhartha said, organizing the role play, completing the role play within five minutes is a challenge. My high fluency is hard. Bijamal has said, my fluency and grammar is hard. Annie has said, my lack of flow and empathy is difficult. Anisha has said, my vocabulary. So lots of valid reasons here. Uh, ne uh, sorry, Nifu here has said, tone and time management, certainly quite true. Uh, I can just click on that. Yep. Organization is the biggest challenge in OET speaking. Right, of course. Person said, my grammar is hard. And I'm mere too much. And um, and um is my problem. We call them the hums and the has. Yeah. So lots of hesitation, I suppose, Amira. It's quite a trick. Okay, guys, good. So let's get into it. There are two sets of scoring criteria in the exam. Who can tell me? Who's an expert here? Who knows the OET exam, like the back of their hand, especially the speaking exam? So there are two sets of scoring criteria in the OET exam. Uh, can you tell me uh, what are they? What are they? Um, let me know. A few more comments coming in here. Joffrey has said, my grammar and fancy. Oh, it's terrible, right? Well, of course, it's important to work in that Joffrey as well. It's important to practice that in a speaking, speaking context. So Rami has said, organization is the biggest problem for me. Okay, we got some comments coming in. Mifu has said, linguistic criteria and the clinical communication criteria. I know all of you guys know this really, really well, and that is important. So here we go, guys. Well done. Linguistic and the clinical communication criteria are the two most important aspects of OET speaking. That's what the two sets of criteria are. So we don't know what they are. It's important that you do know what they are. But the good news is, is that today we're going to go through a bit of these in some detail and give you some ideas, tips and tricks in terms of how to get the highest score in this section, in these sections as possible. So let's start off by looking at linguistic criteria. And I'll just make my screen full so everyone can see it. You just have to settle with hearing my voice for now. So linguistic criteria, there are four criterion in uh, linguistic criteria. They include intelligibility, fluency, appropriateness of language, and resources of grammar and expression. So in terms of intelligibil intelligibility, what is assessed? Well, your pronunciation, your intonation, and your accent. So pronunciation, of course, is your ability to replicate the various sounds of the English language, your, um, your consonants, your vowels, your diphthongs, your blends, etc. Intonation is your pitch. Can you rise and fall as is appropriate in the English language? And then the final one is accent. And I have one top tip for everyone here when it comes to accent. Many people come and think, oh, I need to replicate a native English speaking accent. I need to sound like someone from England. I need to sound like someone from Ireland. I need to sound like someone from the USA. No, you don't. And you shouldn't do that as well because it can be quite confusing if you're putting on an accent and uh, it might be also quite difficult for you to do so as well. So by accent, it just means that if you have a particularly heavy accent, which might impede understanding, then you should try to minimize that and reduce it 
I'm doing it right now, guys. I'm reducing my accents because if I spoke with a full on North Irish accent, you wouldn't know what I'm saying. So if you have the same sort of accent, just try and minimize it a bit, reduce it a little bit, okay? Don't change your accent overall. Next is, which is the impact of the speed and smoothness of your speech on your listeners' understanding. So there's two aspects here to fluency that we can see, speed and smoothness. And guess what? A lot of candidates think that fluency is all about speed. It's not, and you shouldn't ignore the smoothness aspect as well. It's not about speaking as fast as you can, because what happens if you speak really, really quickly? You um, get tongue-tied. You might um, uh, uh, hesitate. You might, um, you, might, um, you might repeat yourself. You might self-correct yourself, or not self-correct yourself, should I say. So you need to try and speak from beginning to end with as few interruptions as possible. Um, how is that made easier? Well, by just slowing it down slightly, okay? So you can't be speaking really slow, of course, but you want to try and avoid these interruptions as much as possible. So what I think you should do is think about a speed that you're comfortable at speaking in in your native language, okay? And bring that down a bit and try and find that speed for your English, uh, if you're English speaking. That will improve the smoothness of your speech. It'll result in less hesitation Less, less correction and less repetition as well. So make sure you're speaking from beginning to end with as little interruptions as possible. And speaking a bit slower is a key way in doing that. Okay, next we have the appropriateness of language. Most people are very good at this. So the impact of the language on your tone and professionalism, on your listener's understanding and comfort. Do you sound sort of like a nurse or a doctor? Are you not too formal and too stuffy, but also are you not too informal like you're speaking to your friend? But most people are pretty good at that uh, from your own practice and working in your own job. And then finally, resources of grammar and expression, which is the impact of your level of grammatical accuracy and vocabulary choices on your listener's understanding. Top tip for this section would be, um, it's not about showing off your grammar for OET. Don't forget, you're just trying to communicate as effectively as you can. So. This wouldn't be a time for you to experiment using complex grammar that you're maybe not so sure about using. Only use as difficult as needs be and also as accurately as needs be. Grammatical accuracy is important. So try not show off, try and use grammar to communicate effectively, but don't make it any more difficult than it needs to be. Okay, that's the linguistic criteria. Let's get on to the unique criteria, which is the clinical communication criteria. Five sections for that, or five criteria, should I say. Relationship building, understanding and incorporating, providing structure, information gathering, and information giving. What do these mean? Well, relationship building is the impact of your choice of opening to the conversation and demonstration of empathy and respect on your listener's comfort. Top tip for this section would be make sure you have a suitably nice opening. Don't start off really, really stuffy or really, really offbeat. Hello, take a seat. What's the problem? Ooh, not very nice. Simultaneously, don't also say, hi, how are you? How are you feeling today? Just like that, okay? It should be nice and welcoming, but also suitably formal as well. So something like, uh, hello, my name is Dr. So-and-so, and I'm going to be attending to you today. Um, how are you feeling today? Okay, great. And uh, can you tell me what appears to be the problem? Something like that, something similar for a nurse. Formal, but also welcoming and friendly, asking a question, asking how they're feeling, get the empathy off to a good start. And try and do that throughout the conversation, building a relationship, making yourself feel uh, welcoming to the patient and making the patient feel welcomed. Next, we have understanding and incorporating. The impact of how fully you involve the patient in the conversation on your listener's understanding and comfort. Okay, so don't forget, this is a dialogue. It, the role play is a two-way conversation. So you should be trying to find um, you should be trying to find as many ways as possible to get the patient involved in the conversation. So think about any of the information in the case notes, in the role play card, can I turn that into a question? Especially when it comes to diagnosing um, what's wrong with them. Don't get the patient just to tell you. Try and get their answers from them via questions and find other ways to ask them questions too. Simultaneously, make sure you're listening to the patient. Make sure you're responding effectively to what they're saying. And show that you're listening by engaging in some active listening techniques. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Other great ways to express your empathy as well. 
So get the patient involved in the conversation and make sure you're listening accurately to what they are saying. So that, that might mean that your plan in the role play might deviate a bit because the patient might not respond in a way that you have planned. So be ready for that and be, change, and be ready to change it by a little bit if need be. Next is providing structure. The impact of how you organize the information you provide and introduce new topics for discussion on your listeners' understanding. So once again, asking questions, signposting into the next section of the, of the role play. So make sure you're using your appropriate signposting devices and make sure you're organizing the role play. The good news is that the role play case notes will actually follow through in order reasonably well from beginning to end. So make sure you have a suitable introduction, a suitable closure at the very, very end or salutations, and all the bits that come in the middle. The next two sections are uh, role play criteria are actually quite interlinked. It's information gathering and information giving. So information gathering is the impact of the type of questions you ask and how you listen to the responses on your listener's understanding. So once again, guys, assessing your ability to ask questions throughout the role play, but also give appropriate responses while simultaneously addressing empathy. Information giving is how you give that information back, but check this out, guys, and check this information is being understood on your listener's comfort and understanding. So while it's good enough for you, obviously, to just give that information back, if you really want to score well on this criteria, you have to check that it's understood, check that the patient is fine with it, check that they understood what you've said. And you need to do that by using some closed and uh, conversation checking questions, um, comprehension questions, I say, okay? So for example, you've told a patient about some difficult information regarding the procedure that they have to go through in their role play. You need to make sure that they're okay with it and that they've understood. So ask some closed question at the very end. How is this for you? Are you okay for the, Are you okay with this? Is this clear to you? How do you feel about this? Et cetera, et cetera. Try, make sure that they've understood that by saying questions like that. Don't ask, do you understand? That's quite, that's like what a school teacher would say to a children or a mother or father would say to a child <laughs> if they're being told off. So it depends on the kind of questions you have to ask to. But the ones I have used there would be very, very suitable. So make sure you're checking for understanding with important points of the information uh, throughout the role play. Anyway, guys, that's a bit of a breakdown in terms of the OVT speaking scoring. Hope you find those tips to be quite useful. And we're going to put some of those into practice today. So, guys, I like to have give everyone something to take away in these sessions. Of course, if you've been here before, you will have used these questions before. But basically, what I've done today uh, for everyone that's, who's come to this class is I have created some questions which will assess every part of the OET uh, speaking criteria. As you can see, there are five questions for linguistic criteria, and there are four questions for the clinical communication criteria. They assess basically in a bit of a way of checking how well you've done in terms of the scoring criteria. This is what I'm gonna to use today to give you some feedback on the people who do some speaking, but you can also take these away and use these in your own speaking practice that you're doing with your own provider or with your friends, for example, or your workmates who might be going through the OET exam with you. So I want everyone now, I'll just put this on full screen, to take a picture of these assessment questions. Either take a screenshot on your phone or your laptop or your tablet or take a photograph with something else. When you have done that, please, please send in a comment confirming that you have done so. When a suitable amount of people have done so, we will then move on to the next part of, excuse me, the next part of the class, and that will be the role play practice. But I want to make sure that you're following along with this class, you're giving your own feedback, you're giving your own assessment on how people are speaking, et cetera, et cetera. But I want to make sure that you have done so. Wow, Nithu is very quick. Nithu has said done with uh, a lovey face straight away. Amazing, as is Amira. Thank you, Amira, and thank you, Nithu for doing so and being very, very quick off the mark. So I'll just keep speaking here in a minute. I'll just assess when people have said done in the comments. Great, great, great. Keep them coming, guys, keep them coming. Good to know, good to know, good to know. Thank you. But it's a little bit long, it's got a, number, a good number of people watching today. I just want to confirm that there's no delay and no lag and that you are able uh, to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Nolene has also said done as well, fantastic. 
Keep them coming, keep them coming, keep them coming. For those who have said the screen is not clear, guys, uh, make sure that you're watching on a large screen as possible and that you change your resolution to the highest as possible as well, as that will be important for you to, uh, to do so, uh, to make sure the screen is clear, because I make everything's okay in my end, to make sure that your settings have been adjusted so that you can see the screen fully. Okay, guys. Okay, another few seconds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good number of people have said so. Okay, and three, two, one. Great, guys. Thanks very much. There'll be more opportunity for you to have a look at these and do so in the session as we move along. Let's now move on to our OET mock speaking session, our first role play of the day. So our first role play of the day is going to be for a nurse. So here is our CAF task card, setting hospital casualty ward. We have the task here, which gives us an overview. And then we have the task points here, which you'll use to form and structure your role play. So how it's going to work, guys, is I'm going to start a timer here for three minutes. It's going to give everyone time to plan their role play. Everyone will have time to plan their role play. However, I will want a nurse to come in very, very soon at the end of the role play and do some speaking for me. Doctors, you will have a chance later on to do so as well. But as you can see here, guys, there's a link that says StreamYard. If you're a nurse, please come in and join that link in, uh, in a few minutes time. Make sure your camera is turned on, make sure your microphone is turned on, make sure you're in a quiet environment with a decent internet connection, as that is important to make sure the role play does go uh, very, very smoothly. So um, three minutes, everyone, to plan and prepare. I'll put the screen full screen. If you want to come in, click in the link, come in and join me in the StreamYard session, and we'll do some, uh, for a chance to do some role play speaking practice in about three minutes time. Good luck everyone and time to prepare.
Okay, everyone, and that is the three minutes of preparation time up. Hope everyone had enough time to look at that role play, especially if you're a nurse. So those who didn't get a chance to come into the StreamYard studio or doesn't don't want to, make sure, of course, that you follow along with the, um, the role play today and take some notes, some notes for feedback and just see how the person went along, how you would do yourself in the role play practice itself. So a few people have joined us, but I do have one person who's waiting in the wings with the camera on. So I'm going to assume that she's really wanting to get some practice. And I think she knows who it is. Lizzie, I'm going to give you a chance to come on board and do some speaking practice with me. Hello, Lizzie. Can you turn your microphone on? Okay. Hi, hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Nice to meet you. Tell me a bit about yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, so my name is Lisbeth. I'm from the Philippines and I'll be taking my exam soon. When are you taking your exam? And can you confirm that you're a nurse candidate? Yes, yes. I'm a nurse. Fantastic. I work at the hospital and I'll be taking on July, 10th of July. 10th of July. So about three weeks of preparation, right? And uh, how are you feeling? Are you feeling confident about your OBT exam? Mm, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I'm really well prepared. you still I hope, I, am. I, well, I hope so too you still have three weeks of preparation and you're going to get some uh, a chance to do some uh, oet speaking practice today as well so whenever you're ready lizzie i'm going to put the role play card back on the screen um i'll start the timer for about five minutes it's over to you just during that time to give your best try your best remember to relax okay. breathe don't rush give it your best and just enjoy the experience okay 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 Thank you, okay, sir. I'll put the screen back on. So whenever you are ready, you are more than welcome to begin the role play. Okay, I think I'm ready. Sure, sure. Begin whenever you feel ready. Okay. Um, hello, good. Hello, good afternoon. I am your nurse for the day. My name is Liz. Um, how can I help? Hi, nurse. Thanks a lot for seeing me. Um, as you might know already, I've been in a road accident. Um, the injury wasn't serious, um, but I have lost a lot of blood. And I've been told I need to have a, a transfusion. Um, I'm pretty worried about this because uh, there's a few things I'm, I'm pretty concerned about regarding it. Okay, before I can um, uh, um, proceed, can I ask your name? How can I address you? Yeah, my name's Scott. Okay, hello, Scott. So I can see that you were in a road accident, um, but um, don't worry because the infection is quite small and you don't need to worry about it. And regarding about the transfusion, there is a protocol, um, like we will test the donors and um, have their blood cross matched with, uh, with yours if, if it's compatible. So there's an unlikely for you to have any um, possible reaction or infection. Well, actually, that was what I was quite worried about, nurse. Um, I've heard and I've read that it is possible to get uh, an infection or even worse, pick up a, a sexually transmitted disease like HIV from those procedures. Um, can you tell me more about what the hospital can do to, to minimize that? Okay, so um, 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 it's good that you brought up that concern. So before we start the blood transfusion, um, we do the cross uh, blood cross matching. So to find out if your blood is also compatible with the ones uh, the, the ones we are gonna transfuse it to you, and um, all the all the um, disease will be tested like HIV, hepatitis, so as not to uh, get contact um, or infect you. And then we use um, uh, sterile conditions such as we use a new syringe, new needles, and um, it will be you'll be closely monitored every five and every fifteen minutes, so to make sure that there is no other um, reactions such as fever or rashes or shortness of breath. So, okay, um, I've read though that you can get this and it does happen in some hospitals and even there's a really small chance of me getting it, it it does really really worry me nurse it really really worries me okay i'm i i know how you feel um i'm i'm uh it's uh it's um 
it's good that you brought up that question, but I assure you that um, all these um, blood transfusion procedures, they are closely monitored and cross-matched properly to ensure that you're getting um, no infection and no, no um, contact of other diseases. So this is also uh, important for you to so that you can get fully recovered and get back on your feet mm. and um and you will get better. Okay, I, I'm I'm still a bit concerned but um I do know I need to have this procedure um but thank you for telling me about what needs to be done. Um do you know when this procedure will happen and uh, how long recovery will be nurse Okay, so first there's um, a med tech will come to get your blood and um, she will cross match it um, to the donors once they find that it's compatible. And um, I will be the one to um, uh, get the blood and then infuse it um, to you. But prior to that, I will be asking some personal details to confirm if you're the correct patient to get the blood. Okay. Okay, so what's the okay? So thank you very much, uh, nurse. I really appreciate your time today. Um, do you have any more concerns or questions? Ah, uh, no. Um, I, I think you've answered a lot of things today. I know I have to get this to recover. Um, yes. but thank you very much for your advice today. I really appreciate it. Okay, so if you do have any more concern, I am just here at the nurse's station, um, I'm waiting to be assisted by you. Thank you. Thank you, nurse. Hi, Liz. well, Lizzie, how did it go for you today? I think um, I'm having a fever. <laughs> oh no, are you feeling ill today? Oh no, 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 no we're so doing hard. a role play with you. <laughs> so this is how it feels to like talk to our like um, interlocutor. Okay, <laughs> that was Cause something like. Yeah, because it's really different if you like if you talk to like someone you know or like your teacher, but if you face like an to you know like a real interlocutor it's it's a uh, it's really different um sure so you gotta try and remember when you're doing this role playing practice don't imagine me as a teacher interlocutor imagine me as a patient as best as you can so try and act like as best as you could in um in your hospital environment because you will be more natural then and probably actually it'll improve many aspects of your role play so what do you think you were good at in that role play what's your strength um, I okay. think I'm good at empathy, I guess. <laughs> okay, okay. And is there anything you think? Mm -hmm. Sorry? And um, like uh, I have this background on blood transfusion, so that's um, that's also like one of my strong points to give um, part of my information to the patient. That's useful. And is there anything you think that you could have improved on? Yes, I think I, I do sometimes like get really nervous, though I'm really confident. I don't know why. I just get nervous once it's like it start uh, the role play starts. It can happen. And to then us I, all. I think I stammer a lot or I have these um the um like and there's like a dead air or something. Sure, it can happen to us all. So let's have a look at some of the questions here and I'll kind of give you a bit of a brief assessment of how it went today. So were you speaking clearly and easy to understand? Yes, your your speaking speed was nice. Your pitch was good. Everything about the way you spoke made it very clear to understand what you were saying. Did you vary your pronunciation and intonation relevantly? Once again, no problems with pronunciation and intonation. All very, very clear, so well done. Did you speak smoothly and fluently with few hesitations and false starts? There were a few ums and ahs there. Maybe not for searching for content, but maybe just because you were a bit nervous. But your speaking speed was very, very suitable, by the way. So maintain something like that there as best as you can. Did you speak using appropriate language and tone? I think so. I think you know how to speak as a nurse. So well done. And well done for a very, very smooth uh, conversation. Did you use relevant and correct vocabulary and grammatical structures? Now, I find it very hard to write down grammatical mistakes while I'm also being an interlocutor, but I did pick up on a few things. Uh -huh. You did say regarding about the procedure, regarding about, you wouldn't say regarding about, just regarding, regarding uh -huh. the procedure. So regarding the procedure. Not uh, regarding yes. about. Okay. Even my teacher used to comment me on that. Like I use regarding about, but then That's it cool. should be like regarding only. <laughs> Two teachers have told you now, you must change. <laughs> 
<laughs> so clinical communication criteria. Did the speaker speak in a way that offered empathy and support? When you did, it was good, but there could have been more of it, I think. There could be more empathy throughout. I was a very, very anxious patient. Oh my goodness, I don't want to do this procedure because I'm worried about infection. You maybe could have emphasized it a bit more, everything I was saying, and maybe feel the empathy as well. Bring a bit more emotion into it, etc. Engage in some active listening. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, I'm sorry to hear about that. So a bit more empathy would be would be great. Did you listen to the patient and respond effectively and appropriately? I do think you did, but I think that the conversation could have been structured a bit better, okay? I did notice you were kind of reading the case notes a lot while you were reading. <laughs> you want to get to a level where you want to be able to, you know, free flow this. You planned, you got an idea for it, and mm -hmm. you can speak, but only occasionally listening down or uh, looking down at your case notes. So. What I thought could have made the role play better was I said I had I was concerned about an accident. You got straight into the blood transfusion. You got straight um, into the infection stuff. I didn't really ask about that. So mm -hmm, that yeah. would have been a great way for you to say, okay, what are you concerned about with this procedure? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what, what are your issues? What, what are you worried about? And then answer my question with empathy and then check for my understanding, etc. So there could have been some more questions. To create a bit more of a dialogue in the conversation, I thought it was quite heavy. You speaking simultaneously, there could have been more closed questions. You need to check for my understanding. Are you okay with this? Is this clear for you? How do you feel about this? Is this okay for you? So get the patient involved in the conversation more and check for their understanding more. So you're doing really well, Lizzie, with, okay. the, with the criteria. Your English level is pretty good. Let's try and work on some of that clinical communication criteria. Work on the structure of your role play. Work on asking more open questions for information gathering mm -hmm. and asking more closed questions for information giving as well. And those would be ways that you could improve your uh, role play. But well done for taking part today. Is that, okay? Is that okay for you? Yes. Any questions? At least I would know um, which to improve. Uh, yes, sure. So make sure you're you're getting tons of feedback from a teacher who knows their OET exam very well and will help you ace your OET exam, especially the speaking part the first time. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Scott. You're very welcome, Lizzie. Thanks a lot for speaking today. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Have a great day and good luck with your preparation. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And everyone, so that was Lizzie. Well done to Lizzie for taking part in the role play today. So that's um read some comments and see how people got on in their role play today. I'm sure everyone did think that she did uh, very, very well. So Sharzad has said she did very well. She led the conversation very smoothly and I would agree. Um, great great uh, linguistic skills there in terms of her natural speaking ability. And a few more comments saying, yep, she did very well. Well done with that. Great. Um, good, good. Fantastic. So, um, Lizzie took, got managed to um, take benefit there from some mock speaking practice. And I would like for all of you guys also to take benefit from some mock speaking practice in, in your OET preparation. It is essential for you to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing for the OET scope speaking criteria. You're practicing it and you're getting feedback from expert teachers. We at Swish English are very, very happy to help you in doing that. And we want to announce that today, we are currently announcing we're going to be uh, doing a 20% off discount for all of our OET preparation courses. That's for today only. For rewarding people who have come to this class today, we're giving you 20% off your OET preparation courses. It is, as it says here, only for the first 15 signups, and it's only valid for two days until Monday, Sunday, midnight UK time. So make sure that you jump on that opportunity as quickly as you can. If you want to make the most of that, you need to enter a discount code on the Swish English website. That code is OETLIVE20 OFF. So please enter code in the coupon section, OETLIVE20 OFF at swishenglish.com. I'll be recommending what I think is the best option for you and your speaking practice at the end of the class. So make sure you stay for that. But in the meantime, please take a note of enter code OETLIVE20 OFF and uh, you can uh, use that for your um, your preparation courses here with us at Swoosh English. So guys, I just want to see, are you enjoying the class so far today? Let me know in the comments. Give me a like, give me a love. 
want to know if you're enjoying this class today. We still have time for one more uh, preparation um, role play today. Uh, but in the meantime, let me know how you're enjoying this class. Hope you're finding it useful. Hope you're getting lots of tips and tricks for your OET speaking and you're enjoying taking part or listening to the OET role plays. But please let me know, please. Yep, Nifu has said lots of love hearts. I'm going to assume that's a, a yes. Fantastic. Genu has said, well done, Lizzie. All the best for your exam. I would well, I would also um, uh, agree with that. And Nifu has also said, well done, Lizzie, as well. Lots of comments coming in. Good. So guys, let's get stuck in then to our second role play of the day. And the role play is for a doctor. Pharmacists, there will be some more role plays coming your way in the next speaking sessions. I've heard you loud and clear. I know there's a good number of you coming now. So I will be endeavoring to make sure we do get some more pharmacist role plays in the sessions. Last time we tried doing some pharmacists, there weren't many in the class. So no one actually came in and did the speaking role play with me. That's why I went back to doctors and nurses. But I've heard you loud and clearly. I will make sure I have them on board now for people who want to practice pharmacy role plays. In the meantime, for today, here is a doctor role play. I'll just make the screen fully large and fully big. Here you go. It says suburban clinic. The patient came to you with flu recently and is now presented with acute shortness of breath. You diagnose asthma. Here is the task. You have five bullet points here. I'm now going to start the timer for five minutes. Doctors, I'll send the link in very, very soon. And you guys can come and join me in the session for some OET speaking practice. Five minutes, guys. See you all very soon.
Okay, guys, and that's the three minutes of preparation time up. Hope everyone had a good time preparing for that role play. If preparing for a role play can ever be constituted a good time, but you know what I mean. You uh, find it productive enough and you find it simple enough to prepare for that role play. So we got a few people joining me in the session today. Oh, I wish I could do time with all of you. I really wish, but I had to be very careful about who I pick. So I'm going to play a game of Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. Let's see. I'm going to pick... Afsal. Hello, Afsal. Uh, I'm going to add you to the studio today. Can you turn on your microphone? Hello, Scott. Hello, how are you today, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing really good. What about you? Good to hear. I'm doing very well, too. Can you tell me a bit about yourself? Yes, I'm a uh, recently passed out doctor, so I'm looking forward to move towards uh, move to UK. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to clear OAT. Oh, I'm sure you are. And uh, where are you uh, calling from today? Calling from? You're not calling. You're on the yes, internet. Where I'm, are you watching uh, from today? <laughs> yes, I'm from India. I'm from Kerala. From Kerala? What part of Kerala are you from? Uh, actually, it's named Kannur. Kannur. I passed through Kannur on a train three years ago. I didn't stop there, but I was on the way to Goa. But uh, I loved my time in Kerala. It's a very, very uh, beautiful part of the world. So... Uh, it's good to see you today, my friend. Anyway, um, do you have any questions about the role play you want to address before we begin today? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I think a bit uh, details are a bit less. I think, but I'll try. It's my first time, mm -hmm. you know, first mock. That's good. That's okay. So I'll try. And of course, what the interlocutor will do in the day of the exam is they will try the best to help you finish the role play in time. So if there's any point where you realize, oh, there's not many details and I need to try and pad this out, they will help you. And I will try and help you with that today as well. Just try and take on board the advice that I have for you today. Uh, relax, breathe, do your best. Just try and enjoy the experience and get used to what it would be like on the day of the OEP exam, okay? You're gonna be great, my friend, okay? So here okay. is the role play card. So whenever you are ready, um, just let me know and I will start the timer. <clears throat> I think I'm ready to go. Okay, I've up. Uh, begin when you're ready, and I'll start the timer. Hello, good morning. Hello, doctor. Okay. Hello, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thanks a lot for seeing me. Yes. So, um, uh, can I ask, uh, like, well, how may I help you? Sure. Um, I'm here because I had a really bad bit of flu recently, and it really, really, really scared me. Uh, I'm feeling some symptoms. I don't know if it's because of this. I'm worried that it could be something serious. So that's why I'm here today for you to see what the issue might be. Yes, yes. I can understand that you had an episode of shortness of breath. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think uh, it's it's probably due to asthma. Do you know what is uh, what do you know about asthma already? Oh yes, um, I know a few things about asthma, and that's what I think that it might be. Um, I've had shortness of breath. I've had a dry throat, and this morning I was so short of breath, I thought I was going to die. Uh, I'm, I'm just so worried that this could actually kill me. Very, very serious. So, oh, hopefully you can help me out today, doctor. I'm sorry. Yeah, I can understand that the situation is quite terrible, you know. It's very uh, scary, but you don't have to be worried about anything. It's uh, like totally manageable uh, disease. So, mm -hmm. you know, asthma is, is uh, it's main symptoms is like so shortness of breath mm -hmm. you suddenly you started to feel you start to feel a shortness of breath you feel you start to feel difficulty in breathing mm -hmm. so actually it is caused by some sort of some sort of trigger factors you know some sort of environmental factors like pollen sometimes it may be due to some dust some sometimes it may be, uh, we mm -hmm. some people you know they have they have allergy to some sort of these factors also yeah. it can come as an inherited Inheritation, you know, if yeah. if one of your family members is having 
to asthma can i ask like if anyone any of your parents is having a similar disease yes uh, my father actually has uh, he has mild asthma so you're right there doctor yes so probably it can be it can be inherited also mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to be worried about that i can reassure you that this is a manageable disease yes do you know yes. how what what do we uh, i i i can see that your father had asthma so you mm -hmm. might be aware of the uh, medications right i've got some idea um what do you think would be suitable for me doctor yes i would suggest you to use a ventolin inhaler do you know have you seen that i've heard inhaler. About your father I've might have been using that he wasn't, but I have heard about Ventolin. And I must say, doctor, I'm, I'm quite concerned about Ventolin as I heard people can become very addicted to the substance in it. No, actually there is nothing like that. It's just a, a misunderstanding. I can tell you that this, uh, this is a totally safe drug and this is the most commonly used drug in uh, the treatment of asthma. Mm. Okay. Um, are there any alternatives we can say use instead of Ventolin? Hello, Afsal, are you there? Yes, the drugs are also uh, steroids, Montelicast. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. These drugs can be used, but to start with, you know, we should start with, it is always better to start with Ventolin and we can see how the symptoms subside, you know, with the symptoms subsiding, we can, we can move on and we can see how you man, you are managing with this Ventolin. If you are not manageable with Ventolin, then we can add for further more drugs. Okay. Um, I've heard though, doctor, that people... Mm can die from asthma attacks. Um, really, that's what I'm really concerned about. They can, they can be very, very serious. And I thought that might happen today. Uh, what's your opinion on this or what's your knowledge in this? Yes, I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, I can understand that situation. It is quite scary. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, uh, nobody, like nobody dies of asthma, you know. In this time, in these modern times of modern medicine, nobody really dies of asthma. Like you have to keep the inhaler with you always. You have to keep it with you. And in case of any acute attacks, you know, in case it uh, you are short of breath suddenly, then you have to take a dose of inhaler. And uh, there is a particular method in taking using this inhaler. So I'll teach mm -hmm. you. Uh, like I'll ask. I'll teach you, or I'll ask the nurse to teach you. Uh, how to use the inhaler for the proper delivery of medication. Okay, okay. Well, thanks a lot for... Um, and also... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and also I can... Uh, yeah, do you... Uh, you might have, you might be worried whether you, you, you can, this disease can be cured or what. So I can assure you that like most of the people, they come out of this condition by uh, with simple medications only they know they need not be like they need not to go need not go to uh, complicated medications so uh, there is a good chance of curing it completely okay you don't have to be anxious about that okay well thank you very much today doctor for um, that advice um we'll go ahead with the ventolin on inhaler and uh, i'll try and my best to remain calm <laughs> when a when a um an asthma attack occurs Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And that's the end of the role play, uh, Afsal. Um, how did it go for you today? Yeah, I was I was really anxious. You know, <laughs> it's the I words came jumbled in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell, and not to worry. Um, it's quite a big deal doing this role play in front of many many people in front of the teacher as well um, on the internet. So um, the more practice that you do one-to-one -one or with a teacher, the more that will reduce your anxiety because the more we do, the more we realize this is okay. It's nothing wrong. Everything's fine. And um, so, yeah, 
do what you can just to remain as anxious free as you can and relax a bit. But um, well done for doing it. Yes. You haven't done it before, so amazing. You're better than you were. Um, what do you think was your strength today? What was your main uh, your main strength today? I was, I think I was showing a good amount of empathy. There was a good amount of empathy at various parts of the role play. Well done. And is there any area, apart from your anxiety or not your anxiety, but your anxiousness, your nervousness, I should say, is there any part that uh, you think you could have improved on a bit more? Yes, uh, fluency. Your fluency. I wasn't at all fluent. And there were some breakdowns in terms of your fluency, not because of your speed, maybe your smoothness. Maybe it did come across as a bit fragmented at times. That's right. And of course, when you're nervous and you're anxious and you're jumping about in your head from point to point, that can create quite disjointed speaking. But that's working on uh, a bit more uh, with that. So anyway, I'm just going to go through some of the questions here with you and see how you got on. So. First of all, did you speak clearly and was easy to understand? Um, yes, whenever you were speaking, it was very clear for me to understand you. And um, you spoke at quite a good speed as well. Yes, there were times when you maybe your coherence broke up when you were jumping from point to point. That just comes with practice, breathing, and uh, connecting your ideas a bit better together. But for the best part is that your pronunciation was good, your intonation was good, you were a clear speaker, and uh, your speed was quite good as well. So that's a good thing. Just think about how can I join my language together? What can I do to improve the linking of my ideas a bit better together, okay? Did you use appropriate language and tone? For the most point as a doctor, you did. There was maybe an overuse of the filler, like, 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 like. That's quite informal. So see, if, catch yourself doing that and see what you can say instead or even not say at all, okay? And did you use relevant and correct vocabulary and grammatical structures? Um, I didn't pick up in any major, even any really minor vocabulary and grammatical structural mistakes. It's hard for me to do that when I'm interlocuting because I'm trying to listen to your ideas and the way you're speaking. So I didn't really pick up in anything. So I'm going to say, well done for that. Maybe someone else will say that in the comments here. Okay, let's get into the, uh, the clinical communication criteria. Did you speak in a way that offered empathy and support? When you did, yes, but there were a few times when you could have and you didn't. Now, one thing I did pick up on was that it's very important not to use judgmental language in OET, especially in your speaking. And when I talked about my concerns with the Ventimol inhaler, you said, no, it isn't this misunderstanding. So that was, that was insinuating that I misunderstood. And also, you didn't show empathy. You said, no, you're wrong. So try and avoid using language like that. Something like... I understand uh, you may have heard this about Ventimol, understand how you feel about it, but rest assured and give your reasons why Ventimol might be better, okay? So show that you can empathize with my concern over an inhaler and just try to ensure and uh, reassure me that it's fine. But try not to say no when a patient says something. That was just the wrong and not to say misunderstanding. Yes. That's judgmental language, okay. okay? But apart from that, at the beginning, at the oh. end, at one point, there was some empathy being used very, very well, okay? Did you listen to the patient and respond effectively and appropriately? For the most part, when you did get my information, you did give me relevant information, which was appropriate. But one thing else that was missing in this role play today was some closed questions, checking for my understanding. And as you can see, many candidates that come on today and do OET role play practice with me don't do that because maybe you don't do it naturally in your speaking. OET and Western healthcare systems want you to do this. How is this for you? Are you okay with this? How do you feel about this, etc.? Make sure I'm okay with what you told me and that you have responded and listened effectively. Okay. Was the delivery of information structured appropriately? I think you did quite a good job of moving through the role play card. Two areas I want to pick up to you uh, is your introduction. Hi, how are you? Okay. You need to be more formal and more suitable for a, a doctor's introduction. You need to suggest, do you know me? Is it a follow-up consultation? Is it a beginning consultation? And react appropriately. Simultaneously, your salutation at the very end. Okay, thanks, bye. I was I was thinking, what, what, what am I doing now? What 
is being done for me now? Am I getting the inhaler? What else that you suggested for me to help with me in the, in the role play? What's going to happen there? So it's very tempting for us to go, oh, role play is done. Checking out, I'm done. But you need to also have a suitable conclusion at the very end. Uh, remind the patient about what's happening next. Any further questions they might have. Thanks a lot for coming today. Have a great day. So think about your intro and your conclusion. How can you make that suitable? One more aspect of your structure would be your time management. The role play came in at nearly six minutes. So you need to move through the points fairly quickly. You can't linger on one too long, but that comes with practice, that comes with support, and that does come with feedback, Afgal, but Afsal, but think about your time management. Overall, was I satisfied with delivery of your information? Uh, I would have said mostly, but I would have been confused in terms of what's happening next because I wasn't told what was happening next, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe I would have thought, ooh, that doctor insinuated I, I, it was a misunderstanding or I didn't know something. Be careful with your tone there, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking about it from the patient's perspective. So a few areas absolutely I want you to work on, think about is your intro, your conclusion, more open questions, more closed questions. Be careful with your judgmental language as well. So how can yes, you respond sure. empathetically to everything that's being said? Okay. Sure, but for your I'll, first... I'll work on that. Sure. Uh, is that okay for you? I'm practicing what I preach. Is this okay for you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But well done. Thanks a lot for coming along. And it's your first time. Amazing job for it being your first role play. Think about it. You're here. Each time you practice and do some, get some proper feedback from expert teachers, you're going to get better and better and better, my friends. So well done for coming along today and doing it in front of 400 and so people, just so you know. So well done. Thank you. I'll be coming back. I'll improve and I'll come back, sure. Awesome. B best of luck with your OET preparation, Afsal. Thanks a lot for coming and uh, have a good day. See you later. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. So guys, that was Afsal doing our OET role play today for uh, doctors. So uh, let me know how you thought he got on today. I thought, wow, amazing bravery to come on and do a first role play in front of all of you people today and me as well. But nice work. Nithu has said, as a beginner, it's good. You can do better. Keep on practicing. Nithu, thanks for the motivation there, motivational language. You can always do better and everyone can always improve as well. Everyone is saying, yep, uh, great work with the role play today. He did very well despite his nerves, despite using some judgmental language, et cetera, et cetera, as well. So that is important to take a note of, but well done. So guys, two role plays done today. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed taking part in that session today. Either listening into the feedback or taking part in the role play. Hope you've all taken away something from your OET uh, speaking today. Remember, it's really important for your OET speaking that you are getting feedback from people who know the exam, can comment on the scoring criteria, can comment on what you're doing well and what you're not doing so well to make sure that you are getting that 350 in your speaking ideally the first time. That's a way it's which English can do. We've got expert teachers who are very, very happy to help you with your OET preparation. And of course, um, as I mentioned earlier on, we are currently running a 20% discount on OET courses uh, for all students who have came today. So the reason how you're going to get that today is there is a 20% off discount code. And you only get that from being here today. You can see it at the bottom of the screen, but also I'll put it on the screen for you guys now. It is OET Live 20 off. That is a coupon code. You enter that coupon on the website and 20% will be taken off your OET Swoosh English preparation package. But remember, it's only for the first 15 people who sign up. We can't have this offer open for everyone. And it's valid until Sunday midnight UK time. So simply enter code OET Live 20 off at the Swoosh English website to get a discount uh, on your Swoosh English package. Now, of course, which package would we recommend for you? Well, I want to show you a bit of a recommendation now. And what would be, I think, is the best, a very good option for most people who are looking to sign up to their OVT course. And that is our OVT um, Accelerator Package. I'll show you here, guys. Our Accelerator Package is only $99. That is only 25% of the price of the real OVT exam. 
and you get access to teacher feedback and live classes. We have this course for nurses and doctors. And just so you know, we have it for any other um, candidate as well. Just simply give our team a message and we can put that uh, material on the course for you. But what do you get access to? You get access to four of our self-study video courses on reading, listening, speaking, and writing with quizzes over 30 hours of content. You can test yourself in your OET exam before you even do the OET exam with our exam readiness test. So you can go, okay, I'm ready to take the exam or no, I need to work on it, but at least I know where I am. You will get access to six sets of reading and listening mock exams with post analysis feedback and six sets of speaking role play and uh, writing case notes. You'll get access to seven day a week writing correction service with two of your letters corrected by our expert OET teachers. And most importantly, you will get access to our live classes, including classes on all skills, speaking, reading, writing, and listening. So you can get practice in your role plays like you've done today, as well as our useful live writing correction classes. There are currently 14 hours of OET classes per week, and uh, there are different time zones, and you can watch the live class recordings if you miss them, making it entirely flexible around your studies. A few extra things include our letter model answer bank and our 15 previously corrected letters so you can compare your writing with other people. You will have access to that course for nine months and you can pay across installments as well, making it a very good value package to get teacher feedback in your OET preparation. So guys, thanks a lot for coming along today. You'll see in the comments that we have um, sent the links in for the OET discount code, OET Live, be put into your course and the link to the accelerator package if you are useful for that. Of course, there are other packages too, including our deluxe package and our premium package. So make sure you have a look at others in case you're looking for other suggestions too, which will give you access to more classes, more writing corrections, more mock exams. Really, it's about putting in the, the work and effort for your OVT preparation. So thanks a lot for coming along today, guys. I hope that you really enjoyed this live class today. Um, remember that we will have, oh, I didn't actually tell everyone, when the next live class is, I apologize. I was too busy talking about our offer. So here we go, guys. As you might know, we have a live class every week. And the next live class is uh, this one. OET Listening Essential Skills for Part B. We run a live class every Friday, 9 a.m. UK time on the official OET channel. The next one will be a listening class on Essential Skills for Part B. So tune in. Friday, 25th of June, 9 a.m. UK time, so next Friday, and I'll see you all for some listening skills classes with myself, Scott, from Swoosh English. So guys, once again, thanks a lot for coming along to the class today. I really, really, really appreciate everyone coming along, our two students taking part in the role plays, and everyone else for being so interactive with the comments, etc. today. Once again, if you enjoyed the class, give me a like, give me a love, and even give me a comment as well. Let me know if you enjoyed the class too, because I ultimately want to make sure that you're getting something out of coming to these sessions, that you're getting what you came for. You're more confident with your OET preparation. You're feeling more ready for sitting that exam. If I'm doing that well, I'm very happy. If I'm not, then I need to change things. So let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this class today. Okay, guys. So. Thanks a lot for coming, uh, everyone. Once again, appreciate it. Remember, OET discount code at the bottom of the screen, OET Live 20 off uh, for your discount of 20% off the first 15 people who sign up to a course with us at Swoosh English. Make sure you use it before Sunday midnight UK time to even pass even cheaper than you would for your OET preparation. So have a great day, everyone, guys. Those who are taking the OET exam very soon, wish you the best of luck with your preparation. The ball's in your court now, guys. How are you going to prepare for your exam and pass the first time? Thanks a lot. See you all later. Have a great day. And I will speak very, very soon. Thank you.